I want to talk to you for a few minutes this morning on the subject, Play It Safe. If you have a Bible, would you open it up to the book of Exodus? These verses are not on the screen as I normally do. And I want you to see it for yourself in your own Bible. So if you have an iPhone or you have a regular Bible, I love the iPhone because it is our, our, the, the apps that have the Bibles on the phones now. But there's something old-fashioned about me. I like to hear pages turn. It's just something I, I love to hear a page turn for once in a while. And so I take my text out of the book of Exodus, chapter number 3. I'm going to talk to you this morning on a subject that's been burning in my heart for the last couple of weeks. And uh, I, I want to deliver it to you today to help with the help of the Holy Spirit. Exodus, chapter 3, beginning in verse number 1. I read to you from the New King James Version. Yours may sound just a little bit different. But here's what it says, down to verse 5, then we'll jump down to verse 7, and then jump down to verses 10 and 11. Here's what, the, here's what Moses wrote. Now Moses was tending or, 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 or protecting or watching over the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and he, and he led the flock to the back of the desert and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. And the angel of the Lord, notice the capital A, that is the Lord Jesus precarnate Christ upon planet earth. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire from the midst of a bush. So he, being Moses, looked, and behold, the bush was burning with fire, but the bush was not consumed. Then Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight why the bush did not burn. Now, stop for a moment and, and give me your attention for just a second. It's not, Moses wasn't shocked by it because the bush caught the fire. Because that happened numerous times in the desert which he journeyed with those sheep. So it was not a shock for to see a bush burn. What, what was a shock that the bush was not instantly consumed and it kept burning when other bushes would, would die out in a heartbeat when there was no more uh, kin, uh, there was no more kindling or no more wood to keep the fire burning. So that's what, and so back to verse 3, and, and Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight. Why the bush did not burn. Verse 4. So when the Lord saw that he turned aside to look, God called to him from the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, Here I am. When God calls your name twice, folks, he wants a covenant relationship with you, my God. If he calls your name once, he just wants your attention. When he calls your name twice, he's after a covenant relationship with you. He wants to form a contract, a covenant at that particular moment, and he called Moses' his name twice. Then, Mo, then he said, God said, do not draw near the place. Take your sandals off your feet, for the place where you stand is holy ground. Down to verse 7. And the Lord said, now notice what God said. Three things I want you to see very carefully. And if you mark in your Bible, go and mark the words, I have surely seen. God knows where you are this morning. Thank God. He said, I have surely seen the oppression of my people who are in Egypt. Here's the second thing. And have heard their cry because of their taskmasters. Here's the third thing. And I, for I know their soul. He is intimately acquainted. Uh, he is intimately acquainted with everything you and I are going through. So he saw their oppression. He heard their cry. And he knows their sorrow. Look at verse 10. Come now. Therefore, and I will send you to Pharaoh that you may bring my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, now watch this. Who am I? That I should go to Pharaoh, and that I should bring the children of Israel out of Egypt. Who am I? Notice how insignificant Moses saw himself. Who am I? You calling me? A man that is wandering out here. I'm, I'm over 40 years old. I've been out here a long time, and you're asking me to go lead the children of Israel. I think you picked the wrong person to lead your people. So he wrestled, and, and if you go on and read, God finally got tired of discussing it with him, and he became angry at it. But Moses wanted to play it safe with his own life, like most of us do. Most, if not all of us in this room this morning, play it safe with all kinds of things. We play it safe with our relationships. We, 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 we watch ourselves so that we don't get a lot, we don't get very many or at all toxic people around us, because you know if you get toxic people around you, life produces life. Mm. Okay. So we, we, we play it safe when it comes to our friendship. We, we play it safe when it comes to our tithing. And in fact, I, I chuckle to myself, because I, and I'm not here to talk to you about money. 
but I chuckle to myself because most folks believe that God will bless the hundred percent without me giving tithe more than He will bless the ninety percent if I do tithe. So anyway, that's free. That's just a, that's a side note. Uh, but we play it safe with, with, with our finances and with our money. We play it safe with our businesses. We play it safe with the church. I even play it safe with my own life. Most, if not all of us, at one point or another, play it safe with everything that is going on inside of our life. Now, I look at you this morning all dressed up and sharp as you can be. And you don't look like you have a problem in the world. Look, I don't want to pass. You, you honestly look like you don't have any problems whatsoever. But just in case I have the right congregation that I'm talking to, and just in case you might have a problem in your life, look at this, would you please? That just as you begin to, you're playing it safe inside of your life, when your problems overwhelm you, when the problems get too big for you, you cannot handle them, look at the next slide, I challenge you to abandon safe. And live by faith. Abandon safe and live by faith. Because if you can learn to live by faith, God will do some amazing things inside of your life. In fact, it was the prophet Habakkuk in the Old Testament, the minor prophet Habakkuk, that wrote years, thousands of years after this experience that Moses had. When, when Habakkuk wrote, the just shall live by faith. So if I am just, that means I am right standing with God. I am going to live by the faith that God puts inside of my life. So I have come to say to Christ Harbor Church this morning, to say to you as a congregation, and to say to you that are watching over the internet, it's time that we as God's people abandon saying and start living by faith. Now, let me give you, before I get into the heart, because I want you now to go to the 11th chapter of the book of Hebrews, I want you to put a marker in the 11th chapter of the book of Hebrews because I'm going to be there in just a few minutes. But before I get there, let me tell you what happens when I decide to live safe and I refuse to get out of the boat and walk on water going toward Jesus. Three things happens to my life. Safe, now watch this, watch the screen. The first thing that safe will keep you from, keep you doing, it will keep you trapped in the past. It will keep you trapped in the past. Now, look at the verse of Scripture on the screen, if you would, please. Here's what, when I began, when I began this, this, this study several weeks ago, and I began to write out what God was, begin, was giving to me for this congregation, knowing that I would deliver it today, I really felt impressed by the Holy Spirit. And I don't know if you're here, or I don't even know if you're watching by Internet, but I feel like this verse of Scripture that I'm about to deliver to you out of the message translation is for somebody this morning. Somebody sitting either in this room or watching by the internet have been trapped in your past. You've been trapped by circumstances. You've been trapped by labels. You've been trapped by things and by people that have just put things upon you. You've lived your life in a trapped situation. I've come from with heaven's word inside of my heart for this body this morning. When God caused Isaiah the prophet to write these powerful words, in the 43rd chapter of the book of Isaiah, verses 18 and 19, out of the message translation, God says this to this congregation and to you by the Internet. Forget about what's happened. We could stop right there and declare that's good enough because God said it doesn't matter what's happened. It doesn't matter what you're going through. He says forget, but you say, Pastor Gary, I can't forget. Oh, yes, you can. Paul said... Uh, Equally in the New Testament, forgetting those things that are behind, I'm pressing toward the mark for the prize of the high calling in God in Christ Jesus. But God, thousands of years before, had already said to the prophet Isaiah, forget about what's happening and don't keep going over old history, my Lord. Don't keep dredging up the same stuff over and over and over again. For once and for all, ladies and gentlemen, let's bury the axe. Let's get it underground, let's, put it, let's get it buried, let's get it taken care of so that God can do whatever he wants to do in this congregation or in your life. I believe and I decree and I declare it upon the authority in the name of heaven. God wants to take this body, God wants to take you personally to a new level and a new stand in him. And it's going to require of every one of us to cut some cords away from the shoreline, to get out of our safety net, to get out of the boat 
and start walking on the water. I'm talking, heaven's talking to somebody right now in this congregation. The Holy Spirit is speaking to somebody. You've been trapped in your past, but I've come to say from heaven's viewpoint, forget about what's happening. Don't keep going over old history. Be alert. Be present. I'm about to do something brand new. And God said, it's bursting out. Don't you see it? There it is. I'm making a road through the desert and rivers in the bad land. My God, I'm about to do something marvelous. So what I what do I do? I do like that 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 uh, that shortstop does when he gets out on the baseball field and the, and, the, and the big league game is on and that shortstop is there in his position and he's waiting for that pitch to go and he's waiting for that batter to swing and he's got his ball he's got his glove in his hand and he's expecting to be the next person to catch that ball and to throw that that player out. I come to the service to grab hold of that word from the Lord. I want to forget about my yesterdays. I want to forget about the past. I want to forget about things that are going on because God has already said to us, hey, I'm about to do something brand new. Hallelujah. He's opening heaven's door. If you're trapped in your past this morning, I decree by the name of the Lord, heaven wants to cut your cord and get you out into deep water where all you've got is God to lean on from this moment on, my Lord. So if you play it safe, the first thing that you do is you're trapped in the past. Here's the second thing. You get satisfied with today. You're satisfied with today. Look at this verse of Scripture. Notice Luke's Gospel, chapter 5. Let me tell you the story. Jesus has come to the, to the water's edge. And there's these, look, look what it says. He knows, he, Jesus, knows two empty boats at the water's edge. For the fishermen had left them and were washing their nets. They were tired. They were exhausted. In fact, if you go on and read the rest of the fifth chapter, the God, that, that on down from verse 2, you will hear Jesus say to Peter, cast your net on the other side and you'll get a great catch. And Peter said, Sir, not knowing who this man was, not thinking about what he was saying, he said to this, this Jesus of Nazareth, Sir, we have toiled all night and we have caught nothing. We're exhausted. We're tired. We want to wash our nets. We want to go home. We're satisfied with today. We don't want to do it anymore. And Jesus urged him, if you'll do what I'm telling you to do, and you'll throw your net on the other side, you'll catch, you'll catch a great catch. And your Bible, my Bible says there was 156 fish that they pulled into the boat that day because they obeyed the master's voice. I'm coming to talk to Christ Harbor Church. I'm tired of being trapped in the past. I'm tired of being satisfied with today. I read this, I read this verse of scripture again this week because it, re, it reminded me of what I'm talking to you about. He was 85 years of age. He stood on the other side of the Jordan River in the land of Canaan. It's in your Bible, the book of Joshua. He said to Joshua, his buddy, his leader at that particular time, he said to Joshua, Joshua, I'm standing at, I'm standing at Hebron, and I was there 45 years ago, Joshua. Your Bible records this in, the, in about the 14th chapter of the book of Joshua. And, and Caleb said to Joshua, I stood here 45 years ago, and, Ke and, Joshua re and Caleb recorded these words, and Joshua wrote them down. Caleb said to Joshua, I have the strength as, at 85 that I had at the age of 40, and I feel just as good now as I did then. Then he said to Joshua, these divine words, Joshua, I'm not trapped in my past. I'm not going back to the wilderness. I'm not going back across the river to Kadesh Barnea. I'm cutting the cords. I'm getting rid of the past. I'm not even satisfied with today. I'm not happy with what I've, I've accomplished thus far. And your Bible reports these words when Caleb said, Give me this mountain. The mountain where they have the biggest giants. The, the mountain that had the most powerful people. And Caleb said, I'm not satisfied with today. I've cut the cords and I'm ready to go all the way with God Almighty. Hallelujah. Now watch, look at this. Look at this. I love John Maxwell. John Maxwell was an author. John Maxwell was a pastor. John Maxwell is a leader among leaders. And he wrote this word. And I quote, Sad is that day for any man that is absolutely satisfied with the life he is living. 
thoughts that he is thinking, deeds that he is doing, until there ceases to be a knocking forever on the door of his soul to do something great for God and his fellow man. Let that sink in for a moment. Sad is that day for any man who is absolutely satisfied with the life he is living. What does John Maxwell say? There's way much more. Oh, yeah, I, I realize that I'm talking to a number of people that are retired. Caleb was retired at 85. Caleb was, and yet Caleb said, Sir, Joshua, I'm coming to court. There's still something for me to do. I'm not going to sit on my duck for the rest of my life. I'm not going to the nursing home. I'm not going to get my, my rocking chair and sit out on the front porch. I want the biggest giants, the biggest piece of property. God gave it to me 45 years ago. And with God's help, I'm going to take it for the glory of God Almighty. Amen. Woo. The story is told of a little young lad that was fishing one day. He already caught a couple of fish when a gentleman walked by and remarked about, how, about his fishing and when all of a sudden the young boy had captured a big old bass and pulled that in, took out the hook, looked at that huge bass, and then threw it back in the water. And the man was aghast. Why in the world did you do that? That's a whopper of a fish. And the kid said, sir, my pan is only nine inches wide. <laughs> and I don't have room for most of us live in a space nine inches wide. We're not willing to get out of that space because we're satisfied with today. We don't want to cut the cords. We're satisfied with what's going on. I can tell you, ladies and gentlemen, heaven's declaring over this congregation something that's far greater than you and I can even imagine. In fact, your Bible and my Bible says, I have not seen, ear has not heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man the things that God has prepared for them that love him. And so I'm no longer satisfied with what we accomplished yesterday. I'm not even satisfied with what I accomplished five years ago. I don't want to be trapped in my past. I'm not going to be satisfied with today. I'm going to cut the cords this morning. Here's the third thing that happens, and it's this. We get afraid of tomorrow. I not only get trapped in my past. I not only get satisfied with today, but safe will keep you afraid of tomorrow. Look at the verse of Scripture. I just read it to you a moment ago. Out of, the, out of the book of Exodus, and Moses, after God had said, after God had said to Moses, "You leave the people of Israel out. You go back to Egypt." And Moses said, "Who am I? Should I that I should do?" Then again, Moses pleaded, "Lord, please send anyone else. Don't ask me to do it. Don't ask me to take that class. Don't ask me to teach teenagers." Don't ask me to teach kids. Don't ask me to be in the praise. Don't, Lord, please send anyone else but me. Because I'm afraid of tomorrow. But folks, God's already been to tomorrow while I'm still in today. So, let me talk to you about living by faith. I ask you to turn to the book of Hebrews. I love the book of Hebrews. It's written to the Jewish believers. And the writer, whoever that writer is, has written some amazing insights for you and me to look at. Now, when I began to put this all together, I backed up from chapter 11 to chapter number 10, and I put something on the screen for you to see. I don't have time to take you through all these verses, but I want you to look at this one. This guy is, is no longer playing it safe. I challenge you to get out of your environment this morning and no longer play it safe. Now, watch what happens. Look at the screen again. In, in, in Hebrews chapter 10, you can write these down or take a picture of them and look at them later in your, in your Bible study. In chapter 10, verses 19 to 25, the writer to the Jewish believers talks about saving faith in that particular chapter. When you read down to verses 26 to 39, he talks about false faith. When you get to chapter 11, verses 1 to 3, he then talks about growing faith because without faith, the Bible says, it is impossible to please God. But then you start in verse 4 to verse 40, and we start walking through this amazing museum, this historical museum of men and women of giant faith that, that the writer to the Hebrews puts out, and he calls them the, Hebrew, the heroes of the faith. 
Then when you get to chapter 12 of the book of Hebrews, then he writes and talks about persevering faith because there's going to be moments, listen to me very carefully, there's going to be moments when I do not feel like getting up. There's going to be moments when I do not feel like doing what God's called me to do. There's going to be moments when the pressure's too great and the enemy's breathing hot and heavily down my neck. It's, there's moments when the family is sick or the family is hurting or things that are going on or the finances are just not able to do what, what, what we need to be, have done in this congregation. And so I have to get up and say to myself, but God, it's not my work, it's God's work. It's His work. He is responsible for this work. I may grow weary in my saving faith, but I'm still saved. I don't want false faith whatsoever. I want the kind of faith that grows from a mustard seed to the giant kind of faith. I want somewhere down in history someday for God to say Gary Stone is part of that heroes of faith. And I'm li I don't deserve to be listed there. Neither do any of us. But I want us to stretch our faith enough to believe that we can be there for the things that God is asking us to do. But for heaven's sake, let's get some persevering faith. When the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord, the Bible said, will lift up a standard against him. Let's get some persevering faith that causes us to get out of bed every morning and declare to hell, we are still here. Come hell or high water, we are still here. We're not going to give up. We're not going to stop. We're not going to wave a white flag. We're not going to turn tail and run. If God be for us, who in the world can be against us? My God. So, this is what he writes about. Well, I want to, I want to end my message now. Give me about five or ten minutes. And I want to give you three things about living by faith. Three things taken from the book of Hebrews, chapter 11. And about uh, all we'll look at. Here's the first thing that I want you to know. To live by faith, here's the first thing. Recognize that God is already at work in you. Living by faith. Recognize that God is already at work in you. You've offered yourself to the Holy Spirit. Now let me give you a text to prove what I'm just saying. Look at the screen. Here's what it says. 11th chapter of the book of Hebrews. Verse 23 from the New Living Translation. It was by faith. Now watch this. It was by faith that Moses' parents hid him for three months when he was born. That's phenomenal to me. How do you hush up a crying baby? And nobody hear that baby cry. I mean, certainly that mama didn't put her, her hand over that baby's mouth. It had to have been so supernatural for God to cause those of, the, of Pharaoh's army and the people that had come to kill the children. He must have caused a deafness when Moses would let out a cry because a hungry baby is a crying baby. A starving baby is a crying baby. A dirty baby is a crying baby. And Moses every once in a while would cry. And here's what your Bible says. It was by faith that Moses' parents hid him for three months when he was born. Why did they hide him? Here Here's the faith. They saw, say they saw. They saw that God had given them an unusual child and they were not afraid to disobey the king's commands. Oh, listen to me, Christ Harbor Church. Give us a whole church full of people that are not afraid to disobey the command of the enemy, that are not afraid to disobey the command of the nation, that are not afraid. That's what the, that's what the New Testament church faced. When all of a certain sudden the New Testament church full of the Holy Spirit, we're told you can't preach in the name that you're preaching in after a man at the, at the gate was supernaturally healed. They brought Peter and John before them on charges of disrupting the whole community. And they said to Peter and John, we forbid you to speak in that name. And Peter both. Many times Peter opened his mouth and stuck his foot in. But on this day, he opened his mouth and said, oh, sir, we respect your authority. But may I tell you, there is a higher authority than you. And we serve God. And we're going to say what God tells us to say. Put us in jail. Put us in stocks and bonds. We're not going to deny the Nazarene. We're not going to deny Jesus whatsoever. God's put a fire inside of our spirit. And we're going to obey the command of God Almighty. Hallelujah. Give us a chance that will do that in this city, I pray. That will disobey when it comes time. And we have to disobey. We won't turn 
tail and run. But God's at work. I want to tell you, God's at work in Christ Harbor Church, whether you realize it or not. He's been at work for quite some time. And he's at work behind the scenes doing things that I can't tell you yet about. But there's some things happening. He, they saw Moses. They saw Moses and said, this is a child that has the hand of God laid upon it. And they saw that by faith, they were going to stand true to God. Here's the second thing you need to know. If you're going to live by faith, refuse, watch this, refuse to be defined by anything but God. Refuse it. Don't let people put labels on you. Stop it. If they tell you you can't defy it, if they tell you it won't work, show them it will. Quit being defined by the things that people say in your life. Some of you, now I'm going to go back to something I said months and months ago. Some of you have labels put on you from a childhood. I've come to say to you by the word of the Lord, those labels drop off this morning in the name of Jesus. Because it needs to stop. Refuse to be defined by anything but God. Let me show you a verse of Scripture. Let me show you out of Hebrews chapter 11. I begin in verse 24. It was by faith, say by faith. It was by faith that Moses, when he grew up, watch this, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, my Lord. He refused. He chose to share the oppression of God's people instead of enjoying the fleeting pleasures of sin. Watch this. He thought it was better to suffer for the sake of Christ than to own the treasures of Egypt. Look at the next verse. For he was looking ahead to his great reward. It was by faith, say by faith. It was by faith that Moses left the land of Egypt, not fearing the king's anger. He kept right on going because he kept his eyes on the one who is invisible. May I ask you this morning, what do you got your eyes on, church? What do you got your eyes on, ladies and gentlemen? What are you looking at this morning? Are you looking at the stock market? Are you looking at the presidency? Are you looking at things that are going on in America? Get your eyes off of that. Get your eyes on Christ Harbor Church and get your your eyes on Christ, who is over Christ, Father. He is the one. He is the one. If I will simply say to him, I want faith not to be defined by what people think. I want faith to be defined by the saith the Lord inside of my soul. Be defined not by anything but by what God says over you. But what does God say? He says you're the head and not the tail. That's what he says. He said you're above and not beneath. He said, you're blessed going in, and you're blessed coming out. That's what he's already said. And you and I are being defined by everything else. When God's word is the most authoritative word on planet Earth, there's nothing higher except the name of Jesus and the word of God. So I refuse to be defined by anything that anybody says. I'm going to be defined by the word of Almighty God. And my Bible says that God is for us, who in the world can be against us. So... I know God's at work in us. Secondly, we're not going to be defined by anything but what God says. Here's the third thing. To live by faith impacts other people around you. This is not a one-man show. This is a community. It's called the body of faith, the household of faith. Look at this verse. Verse 28 and 29. It was by faith, say by faith. It was by faith that Moses commanded the people of Israel to keep the Passover and to sprinkle blood on the doorpost so that the angel of death would not kill their firstborn sons. It was by faith that the people of Israel went right through the Red Sea as though they were on dry ground. That's not some nice fairy story. That's a thus saith the Lord. Moses said to the children of Israel, to the household leaders, Take the, take the blood of a slain animal, sprinkle it up on the doorpost and on the lintels on the side. Get all your family inside the house. Because at midnight, the death angel's coming through. And only those that are covered by the blood, only those that are covered by the blood are going to be saved. You know the story if you've read it. At midnight, the death angel came. And from the lowest of Egypt to the palace in Egypt, the firstborn of every son that was not covered under the blood, was killed on that night. 
And Egypt, the people of Egypt said to Moses and the children of Israel, get out of here. If you don't leave us and get out of here, God, your God's going to kill the entire nation. Go, go, we want you away from us. And Moses and the children of Israel packed up and ran or left somewhere after midnight. Early the next morning, Pharaoh came to his senses. You know the story when he said, what in the world have I done? I've let them all go. And he packed his army together and started down. And Israel and Moses stood on the dry, stood on the, the banks of the Red Sea. The whole crowd was by uh, 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 probably at least two million people are behind Moses. And God said, raise up your staff in the water. The wind will blow the waters apart. And your Bible, my Bible says, he lifted up his staff. And the winds came and blew and the ground dried up. And Israel walked across on dry ground. And your Bible and my Bible says when Pharaoh and his army tried to go in that place, their wheels got stuck because God turned dry ground into muddy ground and the waters destroyed every vessel. When you live by faith, you're not going to just impact yourself, sir. You're going to impact other people around you. What you have in God cannot be kept secret. It will stand everywhere you go. The story is told of three boys that would walk to school every day. And as they walked to school, they would pass this place where this huge wall was standing. One of the boys stopped one day and he said, I wonder what's on the other side of that wall. Couldn't see. The other guy said, I don't know. And the kid that started the conversation took his hat off his head. Threw it over the fence, threw it over the wall, and said, I don't know what's over that wall, but I'm about to go find it. <laughs> the other two boys, not wanting to get the story secondhand about what the first boy saw when he crossed over the wall, decided we're going to throw our hats over and find out as well. What am I saying? Sometimes if we're going to find out what's on the other side and impact people, not knowing what's on the other side of the wall, God's asking us to live by faith. Amen. We've got to take our hats off. We've got to pitch our hat over the wall. And crawl over the wall and say, if God be for us, who can be against us? I've come to say to you as a body of Christ Heart Church, you can stay trapped in your past if you want to. You can stay satisfied with today if you desire. You can even stay afraid of tomorrow if that's what you want to do. Or you can get out of the boat. See, I'm amazed and I'm, 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 I'm awed by a man who, who oftentimes would mess up and yet Jesus would forgive him. When Jesus said one day, Peter, if, and Peter said, if that's you, bid me to come. And Jesus said, come. He crawled out of the boat. While 11 other men are in the safety of the boat, he starts walking. I don't know if one of those men said, hey, hey, Peter, you can't do that. And all of a sudden, he started to sing because he looked down. Those others refused to get out. They stayed in the safety. They were safe inside the boat. I admire Peter. Oh, yeah, he fell. Yeah, he began to sing. But thank God he was daring enough to crawl out of the boat and start walking on the water. I've come to say to somebody in Christ Harbor Church this morning, it's time we cut the cords. It's time we cut the cords. It's time we believe God. We believe God for the impossible. To believe God to get empty chairs filled with people. It's time to believe God, ladies and gentlemen. I'm no longer going to be trapped by my, by my past. I'm not going to be satisfied with today. And I dare say to you, I'm not afraid of tomorrow. Because my God has already been to tomorrow. And I'm safe and secure in the palm of his hand. Let's get out of the boat. Let's stop playing safe. Let's abandon safe and start living by faith. When I was a kid, with this I'm through. When I was a kid, I love hymns. I love the hymns that we sang on Sunday morning. I grew up with hymns. We didn't have songs off the back wall or the front wall. We didn't have any of that. We didn't have a praise band. We didn't even know what praise music was. We just said, turn to 14. Or page 14, we'd sing whatever page 14 was. Thank God you sang all five verses this morning. I would hate to have been the third verse in a lot of congregations that I pastored in because we often skip the third verse. We just, we would do it. 
But I love the hymns because I learned him, I learned theology from the hymns. I still remember often I will go down the road and a hymn will rise up out of my spirit. And over about two weeks ago, I was on my way to Harlington. When this song, you, you probably have never even heard it, but this song come rising up out of me, and I knew I had to close with it. I'm not going to sing it. I'm going to scare you. <laughs> but the first verse went, I care not today what tomorrow may bring, if shadow or sunshine or rain. The Lord I know ruleth o'er everything, and all of my worry is vain. The course went living by faith in Jesus above. Safe from all harm, I'm sheltered in his love. From all harm safe, in his sheltering arms, I'm living by faith, and I feel more harm. Heaven's not wringing its hands. Heaven's asking us to turn our eyes upon Jesus. Let's live. Holy Spirit, thank you for the precious, the, your presence in this room. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your challenge. Oh, Spirit of the living God, I'm tired of playing the same. Oh, I'm not asking us to be frivolous, Holy Spirit. I'm not asking us to be unwise, and neither are you. I'm asking us to walk with wisdom. I'm asking us to hold each other accountable. I'm asking us to partner with each other. I'm asking us to come to arm in arm, heart to heart. That's what you're asking us to do as a congregation. But you call us to live by faith. You're asking us to get out of the boat, to come to your voice, to walk on the water if necessary, whatever it takes. You're asking every last one of us under the sound of my voice, whether in this room or by the internet. To cut the cords today and stop playing it by stop playing it safe. Somebody, whether it's in this room or on the internet, Holy Spirit has been trapped by their past. And today is the day that you shed you cut those cords in their lives by the power of heaven. Somebody sitting in this room or on the internet has been satisfied, but may the spirit of Caleb, may the same anointing upon Caleb of old come upon this congregation in, in Laguna Vista and may we rise to the occasion for the glory of the Lord. Somebody is afraid of tomorrow, but Holy Ghost, you've already been to tomorrow and you know what tomorrow holds. And if I'll simply trust you, put one foot in front of the other, you'll get me in this congregation to the other side. So speak to our hearts, speak to our minds. In Jesus' name I pray. Stand with me.